Hello students and welcome to the today's class. Today we'll be talking about prehistory uh, and we'll be looking at its meaning, problems and certain implications. There are certain objectives of today's topic to have an understanding of the terminologies used in prehistory, to make understand how the past societies are studied without the aid of textual sources to understand the meaning of archaeology and its methods, to distinguish between the prehistory and the proto-historic periods. Dear students, like the present, the past is complicated and lends itself to multiple interpretations. There will never be a single conclusive flawless history. The goal of the historian, however, is to bring us as close as possible to an exact or complete understanding of what happened in the past. Historical analysis entails a thorough examination of available sources of information, the search for new evidences, and the development of original innovative methods of interpreting historical data. The development of all types of knowledge, including history, involves discussion and debate to a significant degree. All historical interpretations are based on data obtained from historical sources, which are typically split into two categories. One is the literary sources, include the textual evidences, and second are the material remains, which are categorized into the archaeological sources. From the perspective of a historian, Literary sources encompass all texts, whether they are lengthy, brief, written or oral, whereas archaeological sources include all physical and material remains which are left by the past human societies. However, these distinctions are not unchangeable. All remains from the past, including manuscripts, are material in nature. Additionally. Some written archaeological sources such as coins, inscribed images and inscriptions can be regarded as both texts and material objects. Archaeology is the study of the human past through material remains and is closely related to history therefore. Material remains, they range from the ruins of large palaces and temples to small broken pieces of pottery left over on archaeological sites from everyday life. They comprise a variety of items, including buildings, artifacts, bones, seeds, pollen, coins, seals, sculptures, and inscriptions. According to historians, anthropologists, and even archaeologists, Culture refers to all patterns of learned behavior, as well as the ways of thinking and doing that individuals learn from the social group to which they belong. Additionally, archaeologists employ the term culture in a more specialized, technical sense in connection with a few significant concepts such as assemblage or artifact, and even we use the word industry. Any portable item created or altered by human hands is known as an artifact, for example, a piece of pottery or let us say a stone tool. However, an industry is defined by similar artifacts made of the same material which are discovered at the same site, for example, a microlith industry, blade and burin industry, etc. Then the third category, which is an assemblage is made up of all the industries located at a certain location. When identical assemblages are discovered at numerous sites, it is assumed then that these sites they are part of the same archaeological culture. For understanding human experience and behavior, material evidence is very important. It's not enough to just describe a stone tool or pot 
The challenge is to get the stone tool or pot to tell us its own story about the people who made and even used it. Artifacts are rooted in particular cultural contexts. Since they are the byproducts of craft practices and a part of people's livelihoods. So, therefore, the limited technical definition of inverted karma's culture in archaeology can be expanded to correspond the more expensive definition indicated previously. Archaeological cultures do not correspond with the rise and fall of dynasties or kingdoms and the rhythms and patterns of time based on material culture and typically slower and longer than those of the historical events. Exploration and site excavation are part of the field archaeology. Sites are locations or areas where tangible evidence of either human activity can be found. Archaeological sites that have been used by people for a very long period are frequently evident as mounds in the plain areas, particularly in those regions where mud and brick were employed to construct buildings by the past societies. As constructions are rebuilt over the course of centuries by different generations, these debris and depositions from the wind and other substances, they contribute forming these mounds. Archaeological sites are frequently discovered by chance. They can also be found through references from literary texts, doing local or village surveys, or using aerial photography. Simple techniques like ground penetrating radar can be also used to find sites that are buried underground. There are more advanced remote sensing techniques like Landsat imaging. Landsat satellite scanners produce digital images of the Earth's surface and can be used to locate features like buried villages, canals, and embankments. The material culture of ancient people is not always completely depicted by the archaeological data. The majority of artifacts discovered in the archaeological record are items that humans either purposefully or unintentionally threw away, neglect, lost or hide, or left behind when they moved. Furthermore, not all physical characteristics survive. Reconstruction of archaeological artifacts depends on the quality and type of material that has been preserved, which in turn depends on the artifacts themselves and on the environmental elements primarily soil and even climate. In the archaeological record, artifacts made of inorganic elements like stone, clay and metal are most likely to survive. Although it is likely that Stone Age humans also utilized bone and wood tools which hardly survive depending on the geographical and environmental factors. Tropical areas with frequent heavy rains Acidic soils, hot temperatures, and thick vegetation are not good for preservation. When evaluating archaeological evidence, these things need to be taken into consideration. Sites may be destroyed by natural disasters such as floods, tectonic movements, and even volcanic eruptions, and also by human activities such as clearing land for farming or even constructing homes, highways and dams is more likely to blame. Sites can be investigated by closely scrutinizing what is on the surface or by digging or excavating. Sites are explored to learn more about their stratigraphic succession rather than only to examine what they contain. The fundamental principle of stratigraphy is that the lower layers or strata or levels at a location are older than the upper layers. Of course, this principle does not hold true if the site is disturbed. It is crucial to understand the stratigraphic context of artifacts or the specific level at which they were discovered, as well as what other sorts of objects were discovered nearby. 
Excavations are conducted with careful recording, mapping, photographing, labeling and preservation of artifacts. They might be horizontal where a big surface area is exposed or vertical where a small surface area is dug up. Because excavation is destructive, as archaeologists proceed from one layer to the next, some elements of the upper strata they get destroyed. Therefore, recording every feature is crucial. The results of the explorations and excavations are later published. Dear students, now we will be coming to the another aspect of the topic that is interpreting the archaeological evidence. Archaeology relies on interpretation of material culture and evidences as well as when using literary materials. From the simple looking step of putting artifacts into groups to the more complicated step of making historical hypotheses, interpretation becomes necessary. There have been a number of shifts in strategy and methodology within the field of archaeology much like it is possible to detect new trends in the historical literature. For instance, in the 1960s, the rise of what became known as the New Archaeology and a school known as the Processual Archaeology questioned the established ideas on cultural history. This school, which was closely associated with anthropology, sought to understand civilizations and cultural processes holistically particularly in regard to ecology, human adaptation and the interaction of various types of variables. It promoted a problem-focused strategy while highlighting the significance of explanation, generalization and theory development. Following its emergence, the post-processual school of archaeology contested many of the presumptions, strategies and even objectives of new archaeology. Post-processualists doubt the possibility of unbiased historical knowledge. They also explored more complex knowledge of material culture. Their argument that social groupings can employ material culture to both represent and conceal pre-existing social ties. Now we will be turning our focus to the actual meaning and importance of the subject of archaeology. Archaeology usually provides us anonymous history, one that sheds light on cultural processes rather than historical events. It is the only source for prehistory, the period of human history that has lasted the longest and seen the most significant advancements and discoveries. Even after the start of the historical period, prehistory and archaeology remain as a vital source of knowledge for those periods of the past covered by incomprehensive written records. Unfortunately, historians frequently turn to archaeology as a secondary corroborative source after literary sources are accessible. To properly incorporate archaeological evidence into the more comprehensive historical narratives is one of the key issues facing early history of mankind on this globe. Archaeology frequently provides information about aspects of daily life that are either hidden or underemphasized in the textual sources. It gives details on the history of human settlements and can provide highly particular information on, for example, the modes of subsistence or the food individuals gathered for their daily needs and how they did it. It also provides information on the crops that people grew, the farming tools that they used and the animals they hunted and even domesticated. It is a fantastic source for information on numerous facets of the history of technology including the raw materials, their suppliers and the processes used to create different types of artifacts. Reconstructing routes and networks of communication, trade and communities, interaction is another wonder of doing archaeology. The main source for archaeological studies on prehistory are artifacts or the material remains from the past. 
any portable item that has been used, altered or created by the humans is an artifact and artifacts can take a variety of shapes, some of which are given for example below. Let us see, implements made of bone, stone or other materials that may be hundreds, thousands or even millions of years old. Second, the broken pieces of stone and clay pots that early farmers used for storage. Then for example, bones and their pieces, wooden artifacts, textiles and many other things. Additionally, significant sources of knowledge about archaeological sites are non-portable artifacts referred to as the features. For example, a feature might be something like soil stains that point to the potential location of a fence, a structure, it can be a waste dump or a storage pit. Similar to artifacts, biofacts, which are also known as the ecofacts or natural remains discovered on the archaeological sites aid historians in understanding the past. Biofacts are mostly composed of the organic remains of animals and plants such as animal bones, pollen seeds and wood and they are particularly useful in identifying a person's diet, their eating habits and even mode of subsistence. The presence of one or more types of material remains on a site depends on the natural preservation circumstances which are present there including the local climate and environment. But because each artifact on the site gives a clue about ancient human behavior, everything becomes relevant to the archaeologists. The ability to reconstruct the behavior from fragmentary records calls for a high level of scientific knowledge, perception and even imagination. The selection of a site is the first and most crucial step in the archaeological study. In the past, sites were chosen based on knowledge from oral tradition, mythical references and discoveries of specific objects on the surface as a result of soil erosion or mound formations. While excavating during the construction of buildings, the laying of roads, the construction of railway lines or the process of cultivating a piece of land, many significant sites have also come to light unintentionally or by coincidence. For instance, we have the great example from the Harappan civilization, which was originally discovered when some laborers constructing a railroad line decided to take bricks from the nearby mound. It is well known that further excavations of the mound led to the discovery of one of the ancient great civilizations of the South Asian subcontinent. Now we will be talking about certain methods and methodologies which we utilize in the subject of archaeology. Archaeologists use a variety of scientific techniques to identify archaeological sites. These techniques are known as the ground reconnaissance surveys or we simply call it the field exploration. Field archaeology is one of the most interesting areas of archaeological studies and involve many techniques including field walking, field surveys, transact surveys, grid surveying, geophysical methods, GPR surveys, Google surveys, remote sensing, aerial photography and even drone survey etc. Often these ground surveys help us to answer a certain set of questions. These are non-destructive tools to explore the past of humans. However, if an archaeologist is not satisfied with the results brought forward by these survey techniques, he or she then plans to excavate a site for further studies. We remember, excavation is destructive and takes much time to get results and hence much care is to be taken when planning to excavate a site. Archaeologists rely on certain techniques of excavations. It is a long process 
and include the concepts, for example, of vertical and horizontal excavations, digging, layout of trenches, principles of stratification, identification of layers of strata, recording methods, pottery and antiquities, archaeological drawing, section drawing, pottery in and antiquities drawing, analysis of data, archaeological photography and many other concepts. We will be discussing only few of the above techniques in details. And first, we will be talking about the aerial photography. This technique entails shooting aerial pictures of a field from an aeroplane, a helicopter or even a hot air balloon or a drone. Aerial images are taken to document changes in the level of the ground surface using very precise cameras. The images also aid in documenting variations in the color of the soil which are known as the soil markings or the growth of plants which are known as the crop marks, both of which are frequently caused by buried archaeological artifacts. Due to its nature, this strategy is ineffective for surveying a forested area and is more effective in an open landscape. Since 1919, this technique has been used to conduct archaeological investigation and from quite recently, drones are even being used for the same purpose. Second important survey methodology is the magnetic survey. This approach, which is commonly referred to as the magnetometry, uses a geophysical survey technique to identify regions where previous human activity has occurred. In order to achieve this, the magnetic properties of soil, subsoil and bedrock are mapped for special variation and contrast. The technique is used in grasslands, agricultural fields and open soil areas and is especially useful for identifying metal artifacts, ovens, hearths, filled in pits, wells, foundations tombs and other structures. The main tools utilized for magnetic prospection in archaeological study right now are magnetometers and gradiometers. These tools aid in determining the magnetic waves which in turn aid in indicating the date and related information about an artifact. Another important technique is the chemical analysis of soil. This procedure is conducted to measure the content of phosphate and potassium in a soil which help to indicate the presence of human activity in early periods. Next one is detection of anomalies in subsoil. With this technique, archaeologists measure a subsoil's resistivity or resisting power using an electronic tool called a potentiometer. Resistance variations the presence and size of any abnormalities or irregularities and other factors are used to infer the potential existence of archaeological structures such as stone walls, ditches, cemeteries, etc. For instance, the existence of foundations can be inferred if the subsoil's conductivity or ability to resist electric current is seen to be declining. On the other side, increased conductivity is a sign of filled in pits. Now, another important method is prospection by acoustic or seismic methods. This technique involves striking a ground and recording the sound and vibrations that follow. The technique is carried out utilizing equipment that measures vibrational phenomena produced through reflection, refraction or a resonance after the site is sounded or a variable frequency Hertzian wave is sent. When used in conjunction with underwater prospection, the method is particularly useful for locating and examining submerged areas. Now the most important survey methodology nowadays used by archaeologists for field exploration is the geographical information system. Often referred to as the GIS. Aerial photography 
ground penetrating radar and satellite imaging are just a few examples of the remote sensing technologies incorporated with the GIS to create a comprehensive picture of the past terrain. Computer-based geographic information system combine mapping software, database and statistical analysis programmers to mine existing data sets for fresh insights. In addition to helping with complicated settlement analysis problems, GIS is helpful to archaeologists since it facilitates the processing of enormous amounts of data. It is a robust database that can save many levels of information about a certain grid location. It can make three-dimensional topographic maps and includes information on the area's topography, vegetation, geology, geography and even archaeology. Even though all of these contemporary methods have made a substantial contribution to archaeological research, the findings from these inspections are still merely preliminary. It is therefore essential that archaeologists physically investigate the site properly before starting excavations. Now we'll be talking about prehistory and protohistory. What are the meanings of the terms? What is the difference between the two concepts? The primary objective of historical research is to reconstruct historical knowledge. Prehistory includes a time period starting from the human evolution till the system of writing was invented. Nowadays, prehistory is acknowledged to be a wide area of human experience. It received significant academic acceptance, especially when Charles Darwin's landmark writings on the origin of species by means of natural selection was published in 1859 and Descent of Man in 1871. In these two works, the remarkable documentation of the origins of civilization and the fossil record of the human origins were both presented. Since then, numerous studies and techniques have been created to reclaim prehistoric knowledge. The primary attributes, sources and the prominent prehistoric study branches will be discussed throughout this course. Prehistory which is often known as the prehistoric period, is the time period prior to the development of writing and the use of written records. The genesis of the earliest members of the species, Homo, serves as a marker for the start of prehistory. In Africa, this evidence is currently dated to between 5 to 2 million years before present. 1 million years ago in Europe and Asia, 40,000 years before present or less in Australia and much lesser in America. Periodi anti-historic is a phrase which was coined by the French archaeologist Paul Tornel in 1833 to describe the time of human history prior to the development of written records is where the term prehistory originated. Daniel Wilson used the term prehistory for the first time in his influential book with the title The Archaeology and Prehistoric Annals of Scotland, which was published in 1851, shrinking it from its original French. The word prehistory was first used to describe the time when people coexisted with extant creatures whose remains were discovered by paleontologists and geologists in ancient geological deposits. Paleontologists and geologists examine the solid and liquid materials that makes up the earth and the term prehistory now refers to the entire period of human cultural development which dates at least 2.6 million years ago before the invention of writing. In absence of written records, the main source for learning about prehistory are the artifacts or the material remnants. The majority of the material remains are found in the form of stone tools, animal and human fossil remains, biofacts and cultural landscapes, etc. Protohistory 
is a transitional period between prehistory and the time when earliest historical records were available. Proto-history is the study of a region's history and people who were mentioned in the writings of surrounding more civilized literary populations. For instance, when the Celtic tribes were still illiterate in the 4th century BCE, Greek and Latin historians wrote about them. The word proto-historic is frequently applied to populations whose writing has not yet been deciphered. Many fields of modern knowledge continue to place a high priority on understanding the evolution and growth of the modern humans. A few examples include several branches of the physical and biological sciences, medical sciences, linguistic studies, arts, and even social sciences. Each of these fields of study use a different methodology to arrive at an understanding of human history. Archaeological and anthropological methods give us a better understanding of how humans and civilizations evolved. So this is all students what we have to study in the first topic of this course and I hope you have all enjoyed the session. Thank you so much.